Now that you've learned how to apply the kinematic equations in a bunch of big general situations, I need to show you how to apply them in one very specific situation, which we call free fall. So the definition of when an object is in free fall is pretty simple. Um, the definition is if the only force acting on an object is the force of gravity, we say that the object is in free fall. And all objects in free fall accelerate at the acceleration of gravity. Uh, this is symbolized as lowercase g, and on Earth, g is always 9.81 meters per second squared for any object that we're dealing with. The mass of the object does not matter. All that matters is that the object is on or near planet Earth, so it will always accelerate downwards at 9.81 meters per second squared. And and again, we symbolize that with lowercase g. That's the symbol for the acceleration on Earth specifically. And the acceleration always points straight down toward the center of the planet. So in most of our situations, it's just going to be straight down. That's all we have to think about. So right now, this apple in the picture is not in free fall because there's the force of gravity trying to pull it down to Earth, but there's also a force from the hand pushing it up in the other direction, keeping it up. But when I take the hand away, the only force on the apple is gravity, so now it is in free fall. And it will continue to be in free fall until it hits the ground when the force from the ground pushes up on it and it stops it from falling. So as long as that apple is moving through the air with nothing supporting it, it is in free fall. An important thing to remember about um, the acceleration of gravity is that it is always accelerating everything straight down at 9.81 meters per second squared, even when the object itself is moving upward. So even if it's moving up, the gravity is pulling it to a stop and then pulling it back down in the other direction. So that acceleration is always going to be pointing straight down. So if I were to draw a kind of map of what the acceleration of an object looks like at different points along its path, it's always going to be exactly the same. It's always going to be that 9.81 downward. It's the velocity that's changing. The velocity starts very big, but because the acceleration is pointing in the opposite direction, the velocity becomes smaller, and then at the very top of the object's motion it's zero, and then it begins to point in the negative direction, and then more in the negative. So this is something that confuses students a lot. They think that the acceleration itself changes when an object is moving up and then moves down, but that's not true. The acceleration is always 9.81 meters per second downward. It's the velocity of the object that's changing. The velocity can start very positive, go to zero, and then become very negative as the acceleration continues to change it and pull it more in the downward direction. So knowing that an object is in free fall gives you specific information you can use in kinematics equations. So these are three things you know when an object is in free fall. The acceleration is always going to be g, um, which is 9.81 meters per second, and always pointed downward. So if your downward direction is positive, your acceleration is going to be positive 9.81. And if your downward direction is negative, the acceleration is going to be negative 9.81. And you also know um, in some free fall problems it might say that the object is dropped. It's kind of physics code, which means that its initial velocity is zero meters per second. Because if you drop an object, you're not giving it any velocity to start off. You're just letting it go, and the acceleration of gravity is speeding it up, but it's going to start with that initial velocity of zero. The third rule is that if the object is thrown upwards, its velocity at the very highest point of its motion is going to be zero. Because before that, it had a velocity going up, and after it has a velocity going down. So it's crossing from a positive to a negative, or a negative to a positive velocity. And when you cross from a positive to a negative, you hit zero. So the object stops moving for an instantaneously small second at the very top of its motion before beginning to fall again. I'm going to show you a few examples of how these rules work, and then you're going to have some chances to try this on your own. So let's say you have a problem that says a ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters. What will its velocity be right before it hits the ground? So before I fill in any values, I have to decide which direction is positive and which direction is negative. For now, because the object is only going to be moving down, I think it would be easy to consider down to be positive. So, um, that way I'll only be dealing with positive numbers. So if down is positive, I know that acceleration is 9.81 meters per second down, so that's going to be positive as well. The displacement of the object is going to be positive 10 meters because it's moving 10 meters down during its fall, because that's its height that it starts from. And its starting velocity is 0 meters per second, um, because it's dropped. Again, that's physics code. That just means that it starts with no velocity. And we're trying to figure out its final velocity. So looking at our table of kinematics equations, you'll remember that all I need to do is find the equation that has all the things I have, the things I need, and nothing else. And in this case, that's going to be this fourth equation right here. So I just take this, plug in the numbers, and I find that the final velocity of this object is going to be 14 meters per second. And because that velocity is positive, that tells me that because I set down to equal positive, that velocity is 14 meters per second downward. Here's another example. A ball is thrown up at 10 meters per second. What is the maximum height it will reach? So here I'm going to consider up to be positive, um, just because this is the only direction that the object will actually be moving in this problem. Because if we're talking about its maximum height, we only care about the maximum height that it will rise to. We don't care about what it does after. So if up is positive, and I know that it's thrown up at 10 meters per second, that means that its starting velocity is positive 10 meters per second. And because acceleration here always points down at 9.81 meters per second squared, that acceleration is going to be negative because it's pointing in the opposite direction of the positive direction. 
We're trying to find the displacement here. We're trying to find the maximum height that the ball reaches, which when you think about it is the displacement from when the ball leaves the hand to that final point. And this is really important. We know that the final velocity of the ball in this problem is going to be zero because at its maximum height, it will have a velocity of zero. And we want to end this problem when the ball is at its maximum height so that we can find that maximum height. So looking at the kinematics equations, this last one works a second time. So I'm going to bring this up, plug in numbers. The positives and negatives matter a lot here. You need to respect those. So I find that the displacement of the ball is 5.1 meters in the upward direction. So if you throw a ball upward at 10 meters per second, it's guaranteed by physics that it will go exactly 5.1 meters up into the air. So asking another question about the same situation, we can now ask how much time will it take for the ball to reach its maximum height. So using up as positive again, um, you'll remember that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second up, the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second, the velocity is 0 meters per second, and this time we're trying to find t. And if we're trying to find t, we can use this first equation here that has everything we have and what we need. So when I plug this in, I find that t by itself is equal to 1.02 seconds. That's how long it takes to get up to that maximum height. We can also split um, free fall problems into multi-step problems. That's pretty easy as long as we consider um, each step and how they're connected. So as an example, we can ask a ball is thrown off a cliff at 20 meters per second up. The cliff is 50 meters and high. If the ball falls all the way to the ground at the bottom of the cliff, how much time will it take to reach the ground? So the first part, we need to answer how much time passes as the ball is moving up. And the second part, we're going to need to answer how much time passes as the ball is moving down. And then after we figure out how much time it takes to go up and how much time it takes to go down, we can just add these two times and that will be the total time. So Solving for part one first, how much time does it take the ball to reach its maximum height? I know that it starts with a positive velocity of 20 meters per second, if I'm considering up to be positive. Its acceleration is negative 9.81 and its velocity is zero. And if I plug these into my kinematics equations, I find that the time there is 2.04 seconds. I'm also going to need the displacement of the ball just to figure out how far it falls in the second half of the problem. So I'm going to figure that out with another kinematics equation. When I plug this in, I get that the displacement is 20.4 meters. So I'm just going to write that in here. So my time for part one is 2.04 seconds. That's how long it takes to reach its maximum height. For the second part, I'm just asking how much time it takes the ball to fall from its highest position to the ground. And so I can see that it has to fall a total of 70.4 meters um, because it's the full 50 that it started with plus the additional 20.4 meters that it gained. And that displacement is going to be negative because it's falling in the downward direction and I've defined up to be positive. So my starting velocity for the second part of the problem is zero because that's how much it ended with in the first part. It was at the very top of its motion. And again, its acceleration is negative 9.81, its displacement is negative 70.4, and we're trying to find the time. So we plug this into a kinematics equation, and I find that the time here is equal to 3.78 seconds. And so I just add that with the first part to get a final total time that the ball is in the air of 5.82 seconds. So that probably seemed pretty complex. If you lost me there, it's totally okay. I just need you to get the notes down as an example. Um, once you do a few problems with this, it will become much clearer. Just remember those three rules. The acceleration is always 9.81 meters per second squared down. The, if the object is dropped, its initial velocity is zero meters per second. And if the object is thrown upwards, its velocity at the highest point of its motion is zero.